Okay, so this is the second video on how, why I became an atheist. Um, I don't know where I left off last time. That was yesterday. Well, today's, um, I'll continue. Hopefully I'm leaving, starting up at the right point. But anyways, I was talking to you about about how I have brain damage, and I think that's the reason I was not able to have that salvation experience I saw all the other Baptists having. And um, I think really, I got my washer going, going if that's what you're wondering what that sound is. That's really what it was, I, I truly believe. Is, um, I kept searching because I didn't have that salvation experience. And uh, if you, the Baptists believe that uh, you need to be saved to get to heaven, and I was scared of hell. And because I didn't have that experience, that emotional experience that other people had, I wasn't saved, therefore I was going to hell, therefore I had to figure out what I was doing wrong, how do I get saved. Um, and like I said, this, this, well, now these two videos are two, I'm an atheist now, but, you know, pastors, <laughs> if you want to, you're losing members, right? And it's not because of atheism, it's not, it's because of television. Before it was television, it was radio. Now we have the internet. People, church is boring. Okay, church is boring. And people don't want to go to church because it's boring. It's not because they're losing. I mean, yeah, there's probably more people. You know, more people are skeptical. Um, there's less to believe in God and what God does. I mean, at one time, God was in control of everything. God was in control of, you know, our pregnancy, you know, whether or not um, somebody was able to get pregnant or get somebody else pregnant. Um, to God, you know, had set everything up in the universe and, you know, the earth was the center of the universe and everything went around the you know, everything was set up for Earth, and as we, you know, scientific discoveries and human discoveries, we, we found out, okay, we're not the center of the universe. Um, there may be life on other planets. There may be other universes. There may be, you know, the universe is vast. Um, so, we're, we're, you know, uh, they call it the God of the Gaps, you know, where you're trying to fit God in you know, wherever you can, because in the gaps getting smaller and smaller, and some gaps have completely closed up. Um, so yeah, we've lost, um, a lot of people have lost as much belief in God as they used to have just because of scientific discovery, right? And human discovery, I should say. Um, and I do believe, yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot more atheists, but there's a lot more people. You know, so the rate of atheists, I I would have to say, I, I don't know if that's changed much from before, you know. I mean, there's tribes that never, you know, tribes that were discovered, they never believed in God, you know. Um, until the white missionaries came and told them that there was God, you know. Um, anyways... You're losing your audience, pastors. Churches are closing. Churches are having to double up. Um, because your services are boring. Quit being boring. Give people the answers to questions they have. Like, I had the question, where did the... Where did these... Doggone. I hit this table and... My camera falls. <laughs> um, I 
answer the questions. Okay, I had the questions. Who wrote the books of the Bible? What language were they? Wrote? Who found them? How do? How was it determined that they were, you know, the right God that was being talked about to to be able to include them in the Bible? Who determined what what books went in the Bible? Who was, you know, um, what year was years was that? Who translated them? Um, who made copies of them? When were new copies made? All this stuff, I had all these questions, and the church didn't answer a single one. I don't want to go to a building to sing the same old doggone songs and listen to somebody tell me, you know, either God is good or God hates you and you got to get right. I don't want to hear that. I want information. I don't want the same old stories taught to me. I don't want to hear about you know, being gay is a sin and extramarital sex. I don't care about that, okay? I learned that when I was a kid. Not that I believe it now, but that's what was taught to me as a kid. And it's just like the adult version of the same old story, right? Make your services, make your Sunday school informative. You can get these new songs and you know, go, what do they call it, contemporary Christian songs, it does not make your service any more desirable to go to. If your sermons were educational, they'd be interesting. Atheists would come to your church if your services were educational on the Bible and how it just came to be. You know, the simple basic facts of how did this book come to be. You know, who were the people that supposedly wrote these stories? What are the controversies about it? You know, what were the additions later on, like in the New Testament? I didn't know this until I was uh, just recently that some of these New Testament books, there was, you know, verses added in there, not from the original author. Tell me about that. You know, um... You're losing your audience, and I'm trying to help you. You'd have, like I said, you'd have atheists coming to your services if you were more informative. You know, I don't want to hear about how God is good, and I don't want to hear about how God is a jealous God. I've heard that since Sunday school. Nobody wants to hear that crap anymore. So all these things you're doing, you're, you know, remodeling your churches, making them brighter, making them more open. I mean, even even the stuff about um, accepting people into the church who couples who aren't married, you know, accepting you know LGBTQIA people into the church, um, having women as pastors. You have to have women as you know. You have to do all. You're doing all this other superficial stuff because you have to because you're losing your audience. Okay, and um, the thing is, you wouldn't be losing your audience if you're you just you're, if you had content in Sunday school, if you had content in your sermons, you'd get a lot more people. You know, um, that's the problem. And I'd still go to church if it wasn't stu just stupid crap. You know, if you had more information in your churches, in your sermons. I've never gone to a church a church where the sermon wasn't something I've heard a hundred times before. You know, don't do this, do that, pray, read your Bible, blah, blah, blah. That's all the sermon is. You know, and in the fundamental Baptist churches, it was, you're going to hell, hellfire and brimstone and um, you can look this one up. I went to Warren Missionary Baptist Church when it was Pastor Paul McWhorter who was like two or three pastors ago. He would, he was the preacher. He would just yell and scream and his face would get all red saying everybody's going to hell and being gay is a sin and extramarital sex is a or 
premarital sex is a sin, blah, 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 just yelling, screaming, stomping. No content, absolutely no content. And we would sit, sometimes his sermons would go on for like two, two and a half hours. He was one of them. He did not stop. I mean, towards the end, towards when I got older, he, apparently he got enough complaints that, you know, his sermons became a lot shorter. It would only be an hour, hour and a half long. But he'd go on to, uh, and just yell and scream at their... Looking back now, I think he was on drugs, you know, because who could yell and scream for that long? I mean, what are you yelling and screaming about? You know, nobody in the church is doing that stuff anyways. If they did, they wouldn't have felt welcome and they would have left. You know, all them people that you're preaching against, they left the church. So now you're preaching to the choir, basically. Anyway, it was absolutely horrible. And that's another reason I didn't like church. I mean, it's like, end it already. You know, you're, you, you do that stuff going on and on and on for hours with no content. These kids are going the, the kids that are in there, they're not going to want, they're not going to want to continue church when they're an adult. They're like, my God, I had to sit there for three hours listening to somebody yell and scream and throw a temper tantrum for no reason. And, um, I don't want to deal with it anymore. You know, I'm, I'm out of that. So... That's all I can say. You want to keep people in the church, fill your sermons with content. You want them to come to Sunday school. Make your Sunday school educational on the Bible. Don't be talking this, you know, these stories in the Bible and telling us something we've heard, you know, 40 times before. Bring us some information. That's the only way churches are going to survive. Because you're competing with, you know, you, you got the radio, you got TV, you got the internet now. All this other stuff is way more interesting than your damn service. And don't be bringing in some groovy music or a live band. Because that's not going to cut it. Because they, they can hear that on the internet. Make your, make, make your sermons educational on... The history of the Bible. Make your preach about the historical Jesus. You know, preach about what life was like back before cars. You know, back when this Bible was written, before we had the plow and the you know electricity and all the things we have now. Just you know, just make it educational. You're dying, you know, and, and your life draft is, has holes in it. This poor person just told you.